What's going on there guys? My name is Matt or Chewy, as most of you will know me as today, back with another video related to P3D. And today, as you can probably tell by the title of the video, I am going to be giving you my top five tips if you are new to the VATSIM network. I get a lot of people ask me about VATSIM and how to get good at VATSIM or how to join the network and they're worried about joining the network because they don't want to do things wrong. And so this isn't essentially a tutorial on how to VATSIM, but this is a video of my top five tips just to get you started off and what I think is a good way to, you know, point yourself in the right direction if you are thinking of joining the VATSIM network. So number one, is be comfortable with your aircraft be comfortable with your aircraft and in that i mean you don't need to know the entire qrh and manual back to front with your eyes closed and your hands tied around your back and blah 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 but you should have a good grasp on the cons of the um, systems of your aircraft for example if you're using the pmdg 737 it's good to have a uh, a good knowledge base on how the fmc works and how you can program different things into the fmc because if you're under uh, an air traffic controller, you're in controlled airspace and they ask you to do something and you don't know how to do it in your aircraft, um, then it may look a bit embarrassing if you have to call up said controller and go, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that. So I think before you even you know, get onto the network or have anything to do with the network, number one thing is, is to just be yeah comfortable with what you are flying. That can just be one aircraft to start out with if you're relatively new to the flight simulation community doesn't matter what aircraft it is, but as long as you're comfortable flying it and you know how it works, then you are good to go in that regard. If you fly multiple aircraft, you know, and you're, and you're already feeling happy with them, you've been flying them for a while, then, you know, you're, you're good to go with those as well. But if you are very new to the flight simulation community and thinking about joining VATSIM, hold horses just for a second is what my advice would be to make sure that you're happy with the aircraft that you plan on taking onto the network. So that's number one. Number two is actually what you should just be coming up to see on the screen now is use the VATSIM website resources. So if I switch across, you can see the VATSIM website here that I'm on at the moment. And this is the Pilot Resources Center. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below so you can click straight onto this and find this page. But the VATSIM website has an absolute multitude of resources and things to help you guys out with. We've got a thing about charts here, flight planning, training resources. And then if we actually go into the resources, uh, sorry, the Pilot Resource Center itself, We've got little lessons here on VATSIM basics, how that all works on instrument flying, on visual flight rules, everything. You can see here how to do clearances. And it may look boring and a lot of stuff to read, but it's kind of crucial that you guys know this stuff. Um, you can get away with flying on the network and getting used to the network without reading all of this. However, I would highly advise just having a good look at it and, um, and reading through. You know, You don't need to read it word for word and it may look boring. However, VATSIM is a network that kind of prides itself on some form of realism. And so I wouldn't advise going on the network if you're not really too sure how to communicate. Um, so have a good look through these. You know, as I say, you don't need to read every single one of them back to front and know them all off by heart once again, but they are there for your help and they are there for you um, to start to, you know, increase your knowledge about the VATSIM network before you go online. So I think that's a really good resource to use. The VATSIM website itself is very, very helpful. Number three, what I would advise to do is actually to have a look at some of the content that people um, have made online. The number one bit of advice that a lot of, um, you know, that I point a lot of people to is Matt Davies. And I've linked this video to him here. This video or this series was actually created three years ago. However, it's very, very helpful. So shout out to Matt. Again, there will be a link to this down in the description below. He's a great person as a whole, and he's also done some wicked content on his YouTube channel and Twitch as well. And this series is one of his most popular for a lot of people that I, you know, that I get questions about VATSIM, I send them over to here. He's got seven videos in this series and it's called, there we go, How to VATSIM. So I'll leave a link to that. Go and have a look through that and he'll guide you through some stuff and help you out there. If you're more of a, you know, a visual learner and you don't like just reading text constantly, but you want to, you know, look at something and look at an example of how it's done, <clears throat> excuse me, Matt's videos are really, really helpful there. And I'm sure there are other YouTube videos which are really helpful as well. On top of that, something which may help out is to actually watch streamers. I'm going to sell out here basically and show my Twitch page off, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know about anyway. 
But one thing that helped me when I was starting to get into VatSim, and one thing which I know has helped others, is to actually listen and watch content of people using the network live. On my stream and with a lot of other streamers, we pretty much use VatSim 24 7. Most of the big streamers around, like Riggles, you know, Matt once again, people like that, um, they all use the VatSim network. And so, Again, if you're looking at how to communicate with air traffic controllers, you can always go on to these streams and watch content of any sort, whether it be on YouTube or Twitch, and get an idea of how other people are using the network. So just grasp onto how they're communicating with the air traffic controllers, how the air traffic controllers are communicating back to them, and uh, you'll get a better gist of you know the whole process of a flight on VATSIM. If that's the kind of way you like to learn, then I know it's helped with other people, and I hope it helps with you too. The number four bit of advice is actually, it's, it's a bit of a, well, I wouldn't say a controversial one, um, but it's one that I believe varies on different countries, and it's actually to listen to real world ATC. I don't know the specific laws and rules and how it all works in each individual country. However, I believe it may be legal in some countries or a lot of countries to actually listen to live air traffic control. If it's not, please correct me on that in the YouTube comments below. I'm not 100% saying that you should do that. So please try and have a little quick Google search to see if it, you're able to do so. But it's really, really helpful to listen to live world ATC. Obviously, it's real professional pilots and controllers. So they are quite a bit more um, organized, I would say, than just your casual everyday flight simmer. However, it's really helpful just to get you know your head around the jargon and to listen to their communication and to see how the real world, the professionals do things. You may not understand it at first, but once you listen to it more and more, you'll start to get a grip, uh, you know, like a, a grasp, sorry, on some of the things that they're saying, and you'll start to understand what they're talking about. And so listening to real world ATC certainly uh, does help people from what I've heard. And so I would advise if you're able to, to maybe check that out as well, although it may be just a limited resource because it is real world and we're in a simulation, obviously. The final and fifth step for me is to just get on the network and go for it. I started flying on VATSIM network only in April of 2016, and I've known of VATSIM and wanted to think about going on VATSIM for um, many, many years, uh, you know, a good three years or so before actually joining the network. But I'm sure like some of you, I was scared that I would get in trouble, that I would do things wrong, that I would have other pilots and controllers shouting at me, and that things would just all go wrong and I would have a negative experience on the network and never want to do it again. But that being said, if you've taken the time out to learn about the network and to get a grasp of everything that you should be, well, not everything, but um, you know the basics that you should be doing, you'll be absolutely fine. The majority of controllers are very, very helpful and very, very um, welcoming to new members to the VATSIM network. I'm pretty sure that everybody on VATSIM wants the network to grow and more people to join into the VATSIM network. And so... Don't be scared about other people getting angry at you. As I say, I've been flying on the network now um, only 10 months, but it's still a good amount of time, about 10 months or so. And uh, I've only ever heard three controllers, um, you know, not lose their temper, but um, get frustrated, shall we say. And they weren't at me. So I guess that's a good thing, kind of. Um, so for the most part, you'll be fine. Don't be scared about controllers shouting at you and stuff. If you've got a question, you can always ask them. And as I say, it's just to get onto the network and go for it. One thing that is very helpful for a lot of people on the network is uh, I find a lot of people are scared to go on voice and talk to air traffic controllers on voice. So a good tip would be to start with text. Maybe you can communicate completely with controllers the entire way of your flight or flights just using text. And so maybe start out on there if you're not comfortable speaking on the VATSIM network with other users around. And then when you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable, start to progress the voice. So the first step onwards from that would be that you can receive a voice so you can hear other air traffic controllers talk to you, but you can talk back to them just using the text feature. Then the third step, obviously, is to go full voice where you talk to the controller verbally and they talk to you back as well. I'm not going to explain how you do all of those things and how you set them up and everything. That's for a different video. However, there are steps that you can take to build your confidence once you are on the network. Another really good little tip that I've found is 
absolutely phenomenally helpful for me is to have a notepad with you. So even if you are on voice, it may be worth writing a lot of things down. That's what I do. I know a lot of other pilots do it as well. I know a lot of other real world pilots do it as well, not just in simulations, is if they're getting a clearance from air traffic controller at the start of their flight, they'll actually write things down. For example, I usually write down the departure SID that they gave me. I write down the squawk code that they gave me and any other useful bits of information. It's also so very useful for taxiing as well because you can just write down, you know, they say taxi via Alpha Lima Bravo 2 and you can forget those if you're not careful. So I would advise having a notepad in front of you and just writing down anything um, that you may miss and may forget when you're reading it back to a controller. It's very, very helpful. You probably don't need it for if they, if you're in a flight and they say turn heading 150, you probably don't need to t write that down. You can just do uh, the, you know, the, um, the command in your aircraft and then return um, the message back to the controller, so to speak. But the, there we go. I mean, five simple tips. I didn't want to make it a too long and in-depth video and go too crazy about it. I'll pop the, fi the, you know, the, the five main points in the description below, and I'll also post some helpful links in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. If I'm not able to answer them, hopefully somebody else in the community will spot them and will be able to help out and get some advice to you, which one may be helpful. I realize that VATSIM varies across the world and that in different regions of the world, in different geographic regions, um, the way that air traffic control and just flying as a whole is slightly different. And yes, that takes some time to get used to. However, nothing really beats experience. Everybody who's been on the network is has been new to the network and knows exactly how it feels. So, you know, buckle up. It's a hell of a fun ride and it's uh, it's always good fun on the Batsim network. I thoroughly do enjoy it. So just go for it. Have fun. And if you're not having fun, then don't do it. It's as simple as that. There's absolutely no need to get stressed out over Batsim. If you're getting stressed out about it, take a second and do something that you find is fun. There are other networks that you can go on. You can do something different if it's just not quite for you. I realize VATSIM isn't for everybody in the flight simulation community, but there is no harm whatsoever in trying it out if you are interested. Please like, comment, and subscribe on the video if you have enjoyed this one, guys. Thanks very much for watching indeed. I'll be back again soon with some more prepared content. See you later.